Hello class. Today we're going to be dealing with project 3 which is creating a magazine spread within Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and we're going to be creating this to save out as an EPS uh, encapsulated uh, postscript. We need to um, be sure to understand that this is okay for a one-off sort of job where you're basically creating two pages um, nothing needs to be repeated beyond our two page design so we won't be working within Adobe InDesign which is really the software that you would need in order to go to full publications and also items like brochures and such which may be uh, repeated have multiple sides um, using multiple assets from various um, folders that we may have supporting the project this project basically only has uh, three elements that are photographs and they are all photographs that I've taken for this particular project in mind <clears throat> and uh, also the text which I've written myself uh, specifically for this project actually I, I wrote it yesterday um, it's about 250 words right now but it it, it lends itself to um, a longer project and it, it can be expanded if I need to. Um, this particular project I'm going to start with a grid in Photoshop as my sketch idea. <clears throat> We've talked about grids and the need for grids. Uh, this is a real simple grid. It's basically two up. You'll notice that the center line would be um, the fold of the magazine where they staple or bind it. And I have to be aware that I can't put anything important within that fold. That is from uh, the imagery of the models that I'm using in the photographs and also uh, the text. There's no way anybody's going to be able to read what's going on within the fold of that uh, magazine. So I try to steer clear of that and you'll notice the lines on the left and the right of the center line. Uh, those are my safety lines and I'm going to try to keep everything important within that region. Um, and also out of that center. So my sketch. Uh, I'm, I've developed a little story that I'm calling Founding Fathers and um, this is how I'm thinking about doing it. I have some photography that I took in uh, New York and Brooklyn. Um, some fellow artists. We all pretty much put on funny hats and posed for different photographs. And one of the um, hats that was used was a uh, tri-corner and uh, so my friend Jason Yakum uh, was posing with uh, various hats on and various stances. So <clears throat> I'm going to use those photographs of him within that uh, session. And uh, I developed a little blurb in Word that I'm calling Founding Fathers. And let me drag it over. It's only a few oh, Founding Fathers and Mothers in the art world. And um, I've wrote, written uh, about 200 and so, let me see at the bottom here, it says 221 words. So it's not that much and it's something I can use and it's, it's pretty flexible. Um, but it's enough text that I can flow it into the document and make it look like an official design. You'll notice I have text areas here in the lower left by the elbow of my large figure. And then also overwritten uh, in the chest area of my main subject. Um, that I've used in the photography and this this should give me ample amount of space now why am I using real text here well mainly it's for you uh, I want you as my students to consider every piece you do as possibly getting you a job every piece so I want you to approach this with a seriousness and uh, I'm using text that can be read and actually the text is supporting the imagery and the imagery is going to support the text. So get that seriousness in your mind. Think about your portfolio. Um, it's always good to have more to weed through to choose for your portfolio than not have enough. And you're only going to want the best pieces. Uh, mainly because the art directors are going to remember your worst piece. So, think about that. So, in Photoshop, I've got my sketch. And 
I pretty much understand what I'm going to do with it. So here's some of my photography that I'm going to use. This is Jason with a tri-corner hat and a uh, stick. It kind of looks like a, a minute man there uh, and a gun. Here's another one that I've adjusted. Um, let me open up the actual original photograph here to, and I'll show you what I've done with it. Um, do, 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 project three. I'm sorry here, I'm just digging through some files here. And here it is, here's the original. You'll notice the f uh, photograph, you'll see the background. I've knocked all that out in Photoshop. Um, I've bumped up the contrast, so it's basically only a two color item. Between that and that, you'll notice there's a world of difference, but you know what? I've got Photoshop, so I'm able to make these manipulations for my projects. There are some regions here that I'd, I'm not happy with, and mainly we'll talk about that once I get over to the other piece uh, in, in um, excuse me, within Illustrator. And I've got a third photograph right here, which I've also done a little bit of background manipulation. Um, just kind of drawn in some orange and red regions and enhanced the yellow behind him. So there's my three photographs. Colonial 1, Colonial 2, Colonial 3. And the theme being Founding Fathers, you understand where I'm coming from with the colonial aspect. Okay, I'm going to reduce this. So within Illustrator, what I've done is I've done some rough placement. Uh, I've set my grid and I've basically drawn guidelines where I needed them with it for my grid. Now how did I do all that? Well, let's open up a brand new file and I'm doing that by using the command N for new. And I want to show you how I'm setting this up. I'm choosing the size, which is tabloid. But here, the orientation, I'm choosing horizontal orientation. And we will call this Colonial 2, or Founding Fathers. How about Founding Fathers? Since that's the name of the article. Say OK. And there we go. I've set my bleed to 10 point bleed, uh, which if we step back um, into that previous screen in the lower portion, you'll notice it gives you some bleed line. Now bleed means that uh, you want the ability for the printer at the uh, print shop to be able to orient the paper and allow for a little bit of slippage left or right. So that means that some of your design should go all the way over into that red region. If you notice my right hand side there and the bottom and the top has a little red line. That's my bleed region. I want my design to overlap into there just for safety. Now, um, within my um, work screen, I want rulers because I want to know exactly where I am on the page. So what I'm going to do is hit Command R, as in Robert, and that will give me up top. You'll notice I've got numbers on the top and there are numbers down the side. Now, let me drag this over here so it can be clearly seen. I have to grab the uh, top of my work area. Numbers across the top, numbers down the side. The zero lines right now are right at the corner, top left hand corner is zero. Now, once I have my rulers, that means I can set guides because I go right to where the, with my black arrow cursor, I go right to where the ruler edge is and I pull down and I get a line and I can drop it anywhere and you notice there's a slight blue line here that uh, highlights when I go over top of it that's a guide and I need a guide around the edges around the top and I'm roughly setting these at like 36 points in from the edge and it's just a safety region for me as a designer uh, to keep my paragraphs within those lines and all kinds of artwork. I want to make sure it's in the center. Um, likewise, I need my guides 
um, to be dead center. So my center line here, uh, I think it's 576. Let me zoom out a little bit and make sure that is correct. Yeah, sorry about the squeaky chair, but that's uh, the way it is. Okay, so I've got my center lines. I want that uh, gutter safety region added. So these are going at uh, roughly 540. And then equidistant on the other side. I'm just eyeballing this for speed. Um, so you notice my guides are now set up like my grid over here in Photoshop. Let me um, get to this one. Here, I'm going to shut off the drawing. And there you see my grid, my original grid. And I'm going to overlay my design within that grid. So back into Illustrator, and there we go. Okay, within Illustrator, I want to place my artwork. I'm not co copying and pasting it um, as if I'm importing it. I want to actually place it, so that gives me the option of editing my artwork back in Illust uh, excuse me, back in Photoshop if I need to, and we will need to edit. Um, I, I told you already that I wasn't happy with the one um, image. So within, uh, I'm going to place it first and then within Il Photoshop I'll jump back and actually do an edit. We'll see what happens back here in the Illustrator side. So I'm going to File and midway down uh, in the File menu is Place and it gives me a little dialog box. I'm going to place Colonial 2. And here he comes in. He's large, but he's not large enough. I'm going to increase his size by just holding shift, grabbing the lower right hand corner, and dragging him out. You'll notice he increased in size. I want that stick almost on that center line so it sticks with my grid. And that's good. That's where I'll leave him. I, now he's hanging off the edge and he's into the bleed area. That's cool. That's fine with me. Uh, I'm going to need some text. And I know that text is going to obviously say Founding Father, so I spell that out. F-O-U-N-D-I-N-G. Return Fathers. And I think... I have a ton of fonts in my system. Uh, you may be limited uh, depending on what fonts you have on your machine right now. Um, oftentimes you can go out and grab free fonts off the web and uh, I, I have a uh, number of fonts that are scripty so I think I'm gonna go find a scripty font. Bear with me here. Um, I don't know, Snell Roundhand? Let's see, Snell Roundhand black script. Let's see what that looks like. Eh, I know it's going to be more than 12 point. I'm going to have to make this like 200 point and see what we have. I need to grab that lower corner of the box so we see. Okay, now notice it's way over into the gutter. That's way too big. So I've got to knock this back uh, probably down to 125 point. 125 and we'll see what we have that's much better it's not quite there because you notice it goes right into the gutter line there on the G so I'm going to knock that back even further by just using the down arrow on my text size box and I'm in my safety zone now and I want to cinch up the lower line, so I'm uh, using the letting reduction there, which is to the right of my font size. That looks good. And I want to offset, I don't want this hard left with my, um, my F's one over top of the other, so founding fathers. 
I'm going to scooch that one over so they're actually closer to the right. Now, it looks like I scooched too far. Now what you do is you hold Alt and use your left and right arrow keys. And I'm going to use the left arrow key and I'm going to drag that whole line back and kern it to the left. That's called kerning. Likewise, if I now use find that space between the F and the A, I hold Alt and use my left arrow key and the whole everything to the right of my cursor comes over. This is kerning and it's something you're going to need to know as you move further into the design world and especially typography. Um, the space between letters is very important especially with script letters because oftentimes these little feet that are between let's say the T and the H I'm gonna show you you see how that kinda goes up in the air you have to make sure that they join at the right spot some some often have a little descending leg and a, a the previous one has a rising leg such as the N has and um, actually just for yucks I'm gonna get rid of the D you notice the I and the N the N has a little flip that's coming up and it should as if you were writing in cursive it should join into the eye seamlessly so it looks as if it's been scripted in there okay founding fathers and I'm going to actually do a parentheses and mothers whoops not mothers and this lower line is going to be much smaller so set that at 60 and see where it is that's a little bit big I want it to fit right underneath of the fathers bear with me as I mess with this design stuff and again I'm going to push it over to the right space 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 okay I've hit return a number of times and I'm writing the in the art world beneath and we're going to try to cinch it up a little bit by shrinking it down just a tad in the art world and I need to put in a byline and since I am the author and the byline should be smaller than the title um, I am very proud of this obviously because I'm signing it but you know what I don't need to be so proud that I'm the loudest thing on the page Okay, I'm just using my up and down arrow there um, on the right hand side you'll notice the um, the letting box here I'm just using the little up and down arrows and clicking them to get the right letting okay let's move this up and down we'll see what we have okay founding fathers and mothers in the art world by Paul Zadebski okay I have a couple other images I need to place here and one of those would be uh, Jason looking right I think I have a if we look over at my sketch in my drawing yes here's a picture of Jason looking to the right and I also have a little need for text in the lower le lower right hand corner of my left hand page got to keep that straight my lefts and rights so I'm going to go obviously to file again which is over on my other screen uh, I am I am in a two screen system here and I'm only recording my left hand screen which is my Cintiq so uh, you have to bear with and trust me that I'm going to the file and place on the other screen okay Jason 
looking right. That's the one I'm looking for, place. Way too big, but again, I'm going to grab a lower corner, hold shift, and shrink as needed. And I'm going to place him within that safety region. Actually, I'll, I'll make sure he bleeds off. How's that? He's kind of standing guard in the bleed area. Gives me some text region. And rather than Snell Roundhand, I'm going to pick a very legible font. And we're going to go Times New Roman. You can't go wrong there. I jump over to my Word document. And I'm going to copy the first paragraph and paste it over here. It's a little big. Um, 18 point is a little large. I'm going to drop that down to, let's say, 12 point. So, Control A, it selects all the text. Choose 12 points. Change the width of my box a little bit. So we want to uh, create a large drop cap within the um, paragraph, first paragraph. So I've enlarged the T to 48 points, whereas the rest of this uh, is 12. Uh, you have to expand the character um, region, and that is to show options rather than hide options. So showing the options gives you this one little screen here, which is setting the baseline shift and I'm going to lower the baseline on the T so it lines up and you'll notice now that it overflows into the next line however I have to hit return here a number of times to get my text legible and uh, I want to give it a little cushion on the arm there and within um, the illustrator fields here we have the ability to um, go around and uh, hit return and so on just to, to get our um, correct spacing So I will continue doing this. To get my wrap, this is a uh, wrap, gives you a good visual cushion. And bear with me, I'm nearly there. This would be uh, very easy to do within Adobe InDesign. Um, it, you can just have a setting on the actual graphic. Um, I've tried to do it in Illustrator. I may not have the correct shortcut in mind, but uh, it hasn't quite worked the way I'd wanted it to. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to move this whole thing up. A little higher so it lines up with the top of the image on the left which would be our graphic that's in orange grab the lower corner and there we go this is my first page founding fathers I'm gonna move this around a little bit maybe drop it tad founding fathers and mothers in the art world now you notice how that jams now into the image so I may have to mess with the return here within the title block so I get my text tool again and hit return
turn. Now, what I'm, the way I'm going to mess with this is actually to mess with the uh, kerning, excuse me, the leading, and just kind of get it to sit exactly where I want it. And that's taken care of. So uh, over here on the right, we have our founding father silhouette. And uh, I, I noticed that I, in my drawing, I had a big block of black here. And within this, um, you'll notice there's a lot of red and even some white peeking through here. I'm going to go back into the original within Photoshop and get rid of that red and black, uh, excuse me, red and white regions. Uh, so I need to find Colonial 2. There he is. Get out my pen tool. Um, choosing black. And I'm going to use a big pen here. So probably nearly 200. That's a big block of black. Okay. Say that 10 times fast. And I'm just going to get rid of some of this red and white that's showing through. That gives me a nice region to set type on, and I hit save. So I save the original, and I jump back into Illustrator, and Illustrator pops up a dialog box and says, hey, some files are missing or are modified in the links panel. Would you like to update them now? Now let me show you what's going on here. And I say yes. And what it does is it updates my background piece. And you'll notice now this is all filled in with black. So I can lay text over it in white, white text. So go to my Word document, Microsoft Word. I grab my second paragraph, copying, get my text tool. pasting. Now you can't see it because it's black on black, but I'm going to select all and choose a color that is not black. In this case I'm going to choose white. The size is way too big. I've got to make New Times Roman size 12 point. And I want my height and because it's uh, white on black I may have to make this bold just so that it reads well and uh, the ink won't bleed in change the size of my text box so we get equal weight and just sort of arrange it there I'm going to grab another guide because I want to make sure that I have a horizontal that is lining up. We'll notice the top of the, the picture here, the top of this left hand page text, and now I'm going to go to the right hand page text and line up the top edge of my paragraph, which would be the top of the M and the top of the A, and we place it. Okay, now I've got one more image I've got to import. Remember, I, I required three. So I've got my friend standing there with his arms crossed. So I'm going to place one more object, and I may actually create like a ghost in the back here. We'll see. See how it goes. So I go File place and colonial one place which I like this image of uh, and I'm going to transform this by excuse me arrange it and send it to the back and I'm going to set an opacity of let's say 50% and drag him 
just so he's peeking out here in the corner. Yeah, it's not really working. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring him to the front, arrange, bring to front, change the size, scale to, ooh, let's say 20%. and just place him down here in the lower right and see what that looks like. I think it works. He's ghosted. Our text kind of rolls over top of him. I can change that by moving the edge over. He's within our safety zone here. He stays within our grid. I think that works. View. I like my design. File save. Founding Fathers. I'm going to save this as an EPS. In Project 3, save. And uh, I have a number of different options here. I'm going to save it backwards in time because I know some of you are working with previous versions. So I'm going to save this as far back as a Illustrator CS2 version. It gives me a warning box. I say OK. And I'm now saving it. Likewise, uh, in order for me to show this to people, I can actually save this uh, as a PDF, which is another option. Save as Adobe PDF. And we're saving that. And that's the end of that. It's ready to show to a client and pass around to uh, various other people within my design department to get their feedback from. Um, they may have issues such as uh, this white field may be too much for them. Uh, doesn't matter at this point. I can still move everything around. Nothing's set in stone. Even the images can be flipped out. Um, I can make edits to the originals if I need to still within Adobe Photoshop. Uh, but at this point, this project uh, is ready to go and ready to send a print. So hope you enjoyed the demo.